Yeah, um, so it started in, in college and I began to look both um, at who I was, uh, uh, being an artist myself, I, I really um, wanted to know where the self-expression came out of and, um, and I was having trouble locating it, actually. Mm -hmm. The more I focused on myself, the less I could find myself. So, so this became... Um, the more I focused on myself, the less I could find myself. Interesting. Yeah. So, you know, this, this is a problem of contemporary art, actually is that it's, it's so based on self-expression that um, you you know, unless you have a very strong ego and you can live with that ego, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is difficult to do, uh, you know, and, and also um, it, it can force you to, be, to wear these masks mm -hmm. that you know is not authentic, but you have to do it in order to uh, be an artist or be um, successful in, in any endeavor, right. actually. So what would an example of an artist's mask be? Someone who has a huge ego and is really just all about self-expression. What, what would one of those masks look well, like? Well, so a great example is uh, at the Washington uh, National Gallery, there was this great exhibit of self-portraits of two artists, one Picasso, mm -hmm. the other Rembrandt. Mm -hmm. Picasso's self-portraits, at the end of his life, Picasso, who was full of talent and uh, undoubtedly one of the greatest artists of the 20th century, but was full of ego. Mm. It was that, that's all he was. Mm. At the end of his life, he disappears. Mm. There's nothing left. Mm. Rembrandt, on the other hand, lost everything. You know, his career, his family, his, at, at the end of life, he had nothing. And he, you know, his last self-portrait is his greatest self-portrait. Hmm. It literally glows in, hmm. in, 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 with inner light, peace, joy. Hmm. Um, and so you compare the two, and you see distinctly two paths for an artist. Hmm. One, you know, pursuing your ego, self-expression, fame, fortune, everything of who you are. During his life, uh, yeah. Yes, in Picasso's case. But in Rembrandt's case, you know, he indeed lost everything, and yet right. he gained something that. Yeah. So I compare the two, and I say, which one do I want? <coughs> right? Um, and I decided that Rembrandt, Fascinating. <laughs> that path of faith, right. path of light, um, is, is what I wanted to. Yeah. Yeah. So he's defining love, to me, in, in, in a radically new way. Um, love is not just emotion or um, erotic feelings right. but, but it, or sentiment, but it, but it is, in fact, willingness to die for that love, for that sort someone. Sort of a sacrificial so, component. And, and more importantly, that I would not understand or even come close to understanding this love if it wasn't shown to me. Mm. Uh, first, that mm. somebody must die for me in order to understand that the sacrificial mm. love, mm. what the you know agape love, is is meant to be only possible mm. if if somebody did not enact that love for you. Mm. And that's when it hit me that if there was this figure of Jesus who historically um, have. Uh, proven that over and over that this sense of um, giving away yourself um, begins a journey of you know finding yourself or finding your identity that our egos are in fact um, this false self mm. that we wear masks to cover yeah. and yet our true identity is hidden in this Christ figure and um, so that allegiance, the transfer of allegiance, uh, what I call, is, is a, it took place when I was reading that passage and I, I realized, oh my goodness, if Jesus is who he said he was, uh, he did die for me. Um, <laughs> to, to show me, to, to open my eyes to see truly what love is, mm. which I couldn't carry on myself, was even see uh, mm. myself. That's a mind-boggling concept, isn't it? Yeah.
Yeah. It, it is. I mean, it, yeah. And, and I, 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 had, I didn't know that I had become a Christian yeah. at that point. It took me a year or two. I mean, you didn't get any lightning bolts or uh, the, No, music, but no. I, did, I did have a, uh, this vision of God. Um, and I don't which, mean to be teasing at it. It's, it no, no, no. It's, it's, it, wasn't, it wasn't this dramatic thing, but I, I started to see God in, a, in, a, in different ways yeah. uh, through an artist's eye um, hmm. because I'm trained to tap into my intuition, to be able to bring out something that is internalized. Um, and, and, and that was the first moment where I felt like I was being lifted out of myself, huh. um, that I didn't have to find it, it found me. Wow. Um, so I was kind That's of extraordinary. just, it was just, just, just almost like gravity, hmm. you know, reversed. And um, I'll, I'll never forget that. Wow. And seeing the world through your eyes as an mm -hmm. artist, uh, and an artist who's also a person of faith, how can that help people in a different mm -hmm. space? Yeah, so <clears throat> you look at some of the organization psychology materials coming out, Adam Grant, for example, right? Yeah. Give and take. Um, we're starting to see the bigger picture of how human um, relationships and work can can embed itself in, in the totality of who you are, you mm -hmm. know, not just a segment, right? Mm -hmm. And so empathy, for example, he found out is, is, is something that we, we used to think in the workplace that, that, is, uh, that you have to discard, you know, mm -hmm. it's a Darwinian reality, and, right? Yeah. And you have to beat out the others, but um, it turns out that empathy is very important in the workplace, mm -hmm. not in the way that is, is uh, commonly thought, mm -hmm. but the selective um, emotional intelligence is, uh, without that you cannot become a leader. Right. And, and so, so art uh, seems to me taps into that selective mm. in, you know, emotional intelligence. Mm. It, this experience of beauty actually brings us out of ourselves. Mm. Uh, Dr. Elaine Scarry, who uh, is a Harvard uh, graduate school, she teaches a graduate seminar on beauty. Uh, has written that uh, beauty forces, our experience of beauty forces us to admit our own errors. <laughs> the experience of beauty forces yeah, us to, to admit, admit our, our own, own errors. errors. Wow. That there is something transcendent, that something larger than ourselves. Mm. Mm. So the world that we created has been too small in a box. Mm. Mm. But when you experience something beautiful that forces us to admit our own errors, takes us out of that box, mm. and whatever the mystery, you know, result of that, uh, we, we get out of the box and we start yeah. exploring. And that's the, that's the capacity we have yeah. to develop in, in order to, yeah. you know, uh, overcome many failures and many exactly. you know, disruptions. Exactly. The entire project was sur um, surrounded itself around John 11, 35. It's the shortest passage in the entire Bible. Jesus wept, yes. <laughs> so if you have to memorize scripture, that's the verse to select. <laughs> that's the one in Sunday school you get some yeah, that's quick right, points. That's right. But it's the most profound. I, I mean, explain to me why Jesus wept. Uh, he didn't have to. He was about, he went to Bethany to raise Lazarus from, from the grave. And he told his disciples, I'm going to show God's power here. Uh, he told Martha, I am the resurrection and life. So why in meeting with Mary did he weep? He wasted time because Mary needed that. But I think profoundly we need that today. Um, it's not just about fixing the problem. Jesus can't fix the problem. <laughs> but it's about this again, this level of empathy, right, that reaches deep into our souls and says, you need my presence more than my miracles. You need me, and therefore, I'm going to spend, waste time with you in your sorrow, in your suffering. And um, to me, that's the most important passage in, in the entire Bible. Um, so I, 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 I imagine myself painting, literally painting with Christ's tears every day. I, just ask the Lord to help me do that. And um, so that, that journey was um, uh, really extraordinary. It was revealing. Uh, it was challenging. It was so many things. But um, uh, this, this is a, 
uh, product that came out of that journey. Mm -hmm. Marco, you've given us that gift tonight of the unexpected, the distinct, the different, yeah. uh, your way of thinking about culture care instead of culture wars, mm -hmm. and that beauty and honesty and integrity can even exist in the hard-nosed for-profit business world. Yeah. So on behalf of all of GLF, thank you very much. How about a round of applause? Thank you. Thank you.